guys in the dark. I happen to be an armed uniform security officer in my city. Two years ago, the company that I'm providing service for, which happens to be a motel named the Knight's Inn, it was preparing to shut down for a massive remodel, as well as code enforcement and structural updates. Now this motel was previously two separate motels, but they merged when they were bought out. During 20 years of running between both of the original motels, they had saw some rather negative events happen. The location happens to be walking distance from our county jail. So when a number of people were released from custody, they would find their way to the motel. Murders, drug overdoses, and suicides all were reported on this property. All of these left negative imprints on the grounds. Now I work overnights on the property. And these three events were during separate shifts that I happened to work. One I had responded to covering an officer. The first was on my fourth shift. The first few went very slowly and boring. No one decided to tell my staff of the history of this property. The second to last week of operation, I was helping on duty on one of the night auditors preparing the morning breakfast bar. The bar happened to be where a long shutdown restaurant once was. They were preparing the waffle batter filling pitchers of orange juice when an unopened 12-pack of canned soda had exploded right next to a service access stairwell. The stairwell was padlocked from the inside of the service hallway to the kitchen. Auditor's screams was chilling as well as deafening because of some of the less upstanding guests that they would rent rooms to. I would begin down the stairs to find that the doors went still secured. No one had entered though. I stuck my finger right in the middle of the soda, thinking that maybe it had been overheated or there was something else that could have caused it to burst. But no, it was really cold. I looked at the auditor, who happens to still be shaking, holding a small kitchen knife. I was trying to calm her down. We had both heard a loud little girl giggle. It had sounded really unusual. We decided to run away from the kitchen to the main desk. Five minutes later, the auditor had told me, No one has children that has checked in tonight. That following week, and the last week of the location being open for the remodel. I was doing the grounds patrolling, making sure that no doors were unsecured, and making sure that no people were fighting. Just as I had finished, I get a call from the front desk. There was a Code 6 priority happening. I ran back to the office, tripping on the stairs in the courtyard. After I had arrived, I saw a young black woman with her daughter. The mother was crying, but managed to tell me her husband was not himself. After about an hour in their room, he had pulled a knife out of nowhere. He started swinging it in the room at his wife and the kid. She said that he hates weapons and wouldn't have had one at all. I started searching for the man. I found him sitting in a dark corner of the courtyard area. He had that knife in his hand. He was blankly staring ahead of him. Once the knife had hit the light, I saw blood. I noticed that he was bleeding. I told him that he should drop the weapon as slowly as possible. He had dropped the knife, and he slowly starts to walk towards me. I repeat a second time. Then on the third order, I drew my weapon, ordered that he stop, and to think about his child. Right as I did, three local officers had sprang right behind me, two with their tasers drawn. In a quick display, I had heard the deputy order, and then follow, TASER! The officers had taken him into custody was having me file out a statement when I overheard two of the deputies say, Want to know what's really odd? The room that they are staying in had a suspicious death quite a few years ago, but the detectives say that it was just a drug-induced suicide. The other deputy replies, What are the odds that this guy went nuts? I really think that that's a little odd that a man commits suicide. I came to find out that he had cut his arm till he had bled out, and then a week later, another man happens to lose his mind. Cuts himself up. Is unresponsive this whole time. He was being spoken to. One of the final incidents that I've had to deal with, which I'm really unsure of. There was a suspect that happened to yell, There will be more ghosts here tonight if you happen to enter. Four weeks right after the motel had closed, I was working a city patrol. When the on-duty officer called for priority backup from all available officers that are on duty, it was all to the night's end. I asked what the situation was. The officer had responded. Four to six people may have entered into the back building 
and barricaded themselves into our room. I happened to be the first responding officer, just after 4 a.m. I met up with one of the on-duty side officers. As we were talking, a third officer finally arrives. We heard three gunshots ring out from down the hallway. We decided to contact the local sheriff's office about this situation. Within just a few minutes, several deputies have arrived. They all have shooter vests on and helmets. They attempted to reach the room as we watched from the end of the hallway. A few more shots rang out from the doorway. Luckily, no one was struck by this. The deputies had fallen back to the end of the hallway where the three of us were. A supervisor for all the deputies ordered four to watch the hallway as the rest decided to take position around the building. We had all asked what we needed to do. He replied to block the entrances to the property. No one is to come on that isn't an officer. So we were kept out, and we were basically reporters. SWAT had arrived, the deputies had pulled back, and SWAT took their positions. This whole time the suspects had saw the activity from the windows and holes in that door. A lieutenant with the SWAT office and a public relations officer all had came over to me and the other guys on my staff while asking us what had happened before all the deputies responded. We all heard from a broken out window. There'll be more ghosts here tonight if you all enter. 6 a.m. The SWAT armored vehicle pulls up next to the back of the building. We hear three thumps. SWAT had shot in shells into the room before breaching the windows and the doorway. And just as soon as we hear the thumps, we see the smoke. Five of the suspects were being carried out. A sixth was being rushed out on a straight board to an ambulance. Come to find out, The man with the pistol in the room took his five friends hostage. He attempted to kill himself when SWAT had breached. Later on, he had died at the hospital. So I wonder if he joined the other ghosts in that motel. After that night had happened, we no longer provided security at that hotel. Eight months later, it had reopened as some new aged hipster hotel. I haven't been to that property for some time now. Even though I do pass it whenever I work on our South City Patrol... I really do wonder how the property is doing, and if any paranormal activity still happens after all that remodeling. I was about 10, possibly 11, or a little bit older, when my mom had found a job working as a live-in manager. It was a quaint little motel right at the end of my town. She had taken the job. We all packed up, left my childhood home. When we had first moved in, it happened to be a disaster. There were holes everywhere. Many parts of the house had smelled horrible. Later we had learned that this was because the old manager was a druggie and his wife was making and dealing meth right out of there. A few months into living, we had sort of fixed up the place, made it livable. During this time, my mom happened to be working full time at the desk. We had mostly stayed towards the back of the house, only because of our odd setup. The way that the front desk where you check in is laid out was basically in our living room. It was really small, cramped room with just the desk on one side, a door right on the other. That door had led to our living room. A lot, and I mean a lot of people, decided to just open up that door whenever they were pleased. They ended up getting a view of whatever video game my brother and I were playing at the time. As a kid, this had already freaked me out, especially because of most of the motel's past. A bunch of meth heads came by looking for the old manager, would walk right in when they didn't believe my mother, especially when she would constantly tell them that they didn't work or live there any longer. During summer break, a year or two after we had moved in, I decided that I would stay up all night and play video games. I made a nest right in the living room, made myself comfortable. It was around 2 o'clock in the morning, after hours, playing Skyrim when I started to hear weird noises. Usually if my mom had known a regular would be late, she would leave a key in an envelope for them. Which, looking back, really doesn't seem smart at all. I could hear talking. Sounded like two men that were speaking a different language. So I figured that's what they were doing. And would just leave in a second. They never did. The talking had continued for over ten minutes before I started to hear them pull open the door. First it was gentle. Then they decided that they would test it. As they continued... It seemed to get more frantic. I could almost hear them grunting. Soon, it happened to be full-on banging on that door. I was confident that my parents would hear it. Their room was all the way on the back of the house, though. 
which was about three hallways down. So after a minute, I figured that I was screwed and probably going to die. The banging had stopped, and after a few seconds, I started to hear tapping at the window behind the desk in the house. I saw a head from right behind the curtain. The windows were high up. He looked to be stretching up so he can get in. He started to yank on that window, trying to break it open. While he was doing so, I saw movement at the screen door in the kitchen. At this point, I was shitting myself. I was petrified. I guess the guy who was at the desk door had now circled around to the screen door while his buddy was trying to pry open at the window. He jiggled the doorknob back and forth. After a few seconds, resuming what he was doing earlier, and now banging on that door full force. Even though I was fearful of my life, I decided to try and be a ninja. I tried to army crawl into the little office part connected to the desk. There happened to be a key drop-off where people would just shove their keys into when they checked out. That was basically just a hole in the wall. I had popped up, all while they were still banging on that door. Grabbed a pencil to lift up the flap. I don't know exactly what I had expected to see. They were clearly at the side of the house. I just had a really horrible feeling about it. Like I was absolutely surrounded. Turns out that I was right. When I lifted it, I saw two more men standing at that door, hands in their pockets. I closed it immediately, and I almost cried. During all of this, I didn't notice the hallway light turn on, and my parents were emerged, looking very distraught. As soon as my dad had turned on the kitchen light and shouted, What the fuck do you want? All the noise suddenly stopped. The guys took off running. I could hear one of them shout something. And then suddenly nothing. It was absolutely quiet. After I had told them what happened the best that I could, they called the police. The police showed up about an hour later, took the report. It didn't seem like this happened to anyone else in the town but they seemed to think that it was some Mexican workers who had come up from the hops farms. Maybe they didn't know that we were closed. I really don't know. Seems like they were just kind of race-blaming it, but I never really got any explanation for that night. All I know is that they really didn't seem friendly, and I don't know what they could have done if they got in. I really hope that I don't see those guys ever again. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos, and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.